he was valedictorian of his high school. Wow. He ran cross country. Yeah, cross country. And, um, <laughs> and he also plays the drums. He's not the body. Makes it for him. Okay. He's a cool guy right now. He's a he's a sophomore that is living in Riva Vista. His major is uh, history, <laughs> history, yeah. and, yeah. and so uh, hopefully you guys welcome his leader yeah. of the week and welcome him as our speaker for today. So. Are these light switches? Whoa. Yeah, that's, that's good, that's good, that's good. That's good. Uh, how about that one? But then yeah. Yeah. Or just both off. Oh no, they're all off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the leader of the week, you have to do the drum, so you have to say that. Okay. Wait, wait, you don't do it yet, we have to do the drum first. Oh. Okay, um, you might not know who this is, but I'll explain to you. Serge Kankian, he's a musician. Ooh. Okay, so this guy's pretty cool. And first I'll start off with why is he a leader? Um, he is a musician with a very discreet political agenda, and he uses music as a means to express his, his beliefs and push his causes. And um, because he's uh, you know, financially successful, he has the money to do this and try to show you his beliefs. So let's start off. Um, this is his band, System of the Down, if you've ever heard of it. Yep. Um, there's the drummer dude on the left, his name's John, Darren. The guitar player, his eyes are open really big. Like that. And um, their search with long hair and uh, the bassist, Shabo. They're all um, Armenian. They're Armenian rock band, and they're famous throughout the United States and internationally. Um, they are just, they, um, they're a very politically active and socially aware band noted for their left wing political views expressed in their songs. So I'll start with an example. Um, one song they have called Prison Song. and Somehow he manages. Uh, Serge, he's the songwriter. He's the lyric, the lead singer. And uh, like example of some lyrics are: um, All research and successful drug policies show that treatment should be increased and law enforcement decreased while abolishing mandatory minimum sentences. So he's talking about um, drug laws, you know, fighting drug laws and stuff like that. Um, the first album was in 1998. Self-titled album had modest success, and um, then in 2001 they came out with the album Toxicity, which um, was a multi-platinum winning, selling over 7 million copies, very well success album, debuted at number one. So once he had this financial success with this, he uh, went on for other things. Um, so one example is in one of their other songs called Pluck. Um, they talk about the Armenian Genocide, which is one of the uh, important issues they discuss throughout their lyrics. So, um, the Armenian Genocide happened in Turkey, and uh, it's not recognized well throughout the world. So, um, one of the things is they were featured in a movie called Screamers in 2006. Um, Serge's uh, grandfather is an Armenian Genocide survivor, and um, it's just about how in Turkey they deny that the genocide ever happened, and it's not exactly uh, which nationally recognized, but this is one of the issues they try to bring up throughout their music and as their shows. Um, in 2002, they had a, another album called Steal This Album. It was uh, a reference to all the people downloading music illegally. And um, one song they had called Boom, and it was um, a, against the Iraqi war. And they had a music video directed by Michael Moore, which has the war. Okay. Um, then in 2005, they had two back-to-back -back albums. Uh, each each had like 11 songs, but they released them six months apart from each other, and they both debuted at number one and were the only artists besides Beatles, Guns N' Roses, and then rappers Tupac and DMX to have two number one debuting albums in the same year. So they're getting their music out, the message across. And then they went on hiatus because the uh, guitar player had heroin problems and it wasn't really working out. So, you know, when that happens, um, Serge decided to be a leader and go solo, do his own thing. So, you know, when you, uh, you know, uh, 
face difficulties along the road, sometimes you have to do it on your own. So he released a self-released album in 2007, and um, one of the songs is called The Unthinking Majority, which is uh, trying to talk about how um, the problems with democracy and the American people, like, you know, are well-educated well on reforms and issues in the world and stuff like that. And, like, a lot of it was he was really, um, I believe, uh, disappointed with the re-election of Bush in 2004, so that reflects a lot of the music he does. And um, one of his side projects was the Axis of Justice that he founded with uh, the guitar player Tom Morello, who's famous from Rage Against the Machine, Audio Slave, and other projects. And um, in 2002, um, they were on tour at OzFest, which is this uh, whole concert. And um, they noticed a lot of uh, fans uh, promoting like white power and other racist slogans. So they formed this organization to first combat racism, racism, and then um, also to bring together musicians, also like you know the uh, bass player from the Hot Chili Peppers, stuff like that, to um, raise money to fight for social justice throughout the world. Um, also, he made his own label after, after in 2001 after the success of Toxicity. You know, he had more money, so he had his own record label, so he could release you know Access to Justice albums and his own self-release stuff and other support other artists stuff. He, uh, he that's important. And uh, I guess what's the moral of the story is um you know if you have a gift such as singing, music, writing, whatever it is, if you um. You know, use that gift to uh, produce art that you know will reach the maximum number of people. You know, make make a living for yourself, but also you know try to promote things that will make the world a better place. If you can. So, thank you.